month uh, I'm going to show you how I made this card. Um, it's in honor of Thanksgiving. And um, I'm going to show you how I did the background here. Um, and the background technique, um, I learned how to do it in the Technique Junkies October 2006 newsletter. And it is called a Braired Madras Plaid. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is take a piece of a white glossy cardstock and you want to cut it five and a quarter by four. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a Kaleidi color pad and this is the autumn leaves. And go ahead and get your brayer and you want to ink it up really good. And then you're going to go ahead and you're going to brayer on the ink the long ways and just go ahead and brayer that on. And then you can just go ahead and ink it up some more and just try and blend the colors together as you're rolling. This can be a little bit tricky but with practice you can get it. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink it up again and I'm just going to start with my first color down here just like I'm continuing it and the extra will just go off on the scrap piece of paper and that's fine. And once again just keep rolling it in one direction and lift it and roll it. And you'll see it'll start to blend really well. Okay, so now you've got that covered. You want to go ahead and you want to turn it 90 degrees like that. And now you want to go back and you want to brayer it again. But this time you're going to brayer it this way. And just keep going. You're not going to be able to see it as good this time. But just keep going and brayering it or brayering on the ink until you can start to see the plaid. Just like that. Now because this side is just about as big as the brayer, you don't really need to go off it, but you can if you want. So I'll just do it real quick. Like that. Okay. So hopefully you guys can see that now you've created that plaid modris background. Now I'm going to set this aside for a little bit and let it dry and you'll actually you'll see when I bring it back it will have blended a little bit better. But I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to show you how I did the uh, image in the middle. So what I did is I took a piece of rustic cream cardstock. I got this from Paper Tray Ink and I used my um, oval nestability die and I cut out a circle. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to take some um, ink and I'm going to be using the orange zest ink um, from Paper Tray. Um, this is their new ink, their new formula of ink, and it's more like a um, like a pigment kind of ink. They've changed the formula. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink up my stamp and I'm using the stamps from the pumpkin stamps from the Fall Elegance stamp set. And I just want to go ahead and I want to stamp this large pumpkin over here in the far left side. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the smaller pumpkin and I'm going to do the same thing. It actually would be the shorter pumpkin. And I'm going to put it right in the middle, just like that. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to get that longer pumpkin again. And I'm going to put it right here at the end, just like that. Okay. Then I want to go back in with the little pumpkin tops. And I'm going to be using the ripe avocado for that one. And I'm just going to match it up right there. And I'm going to stamp it. And I want to do the same thing with the far one on the, be the far right, like that. And then I'm going to take the other little pumpkin top 
and I'm going to do the same thing in the middle with the middle pumpkin. And the great thing about clear stamps, of course, is you can see exactly where you're going to be stamping them, as hopefully you can see when I did that. Okay, so now I'm going to take my sentiment, and I've gone ahead and I've put it on the block. Let me back this up just a little bit. And hopefully you guys can see that. And I'm going to go ahead and take some, I believe it's yeah, dark chocolate ink, and I'm going to ink it up. And then I want to just stamp it right over the pumpkins. I just kind of want to center it so I know where I want it. And then I'm just going to stamp it right on top, just like that. Hopefully you guys can see that. Now the last thing I want to do is I want to take some of the chamomile um, ink from Paper Tray as well. And since it's already in a little cube, I'm just going to use that to go around the edges and just distress it just a little bit, just to give it more of a an aged kind of look. So okay, so there we have that. And then I went ahead and I took another um, Nestability Oval Die and I cut out a piece that was a little bit bigger than the first one. And I cut that out, I believe it's Summer Sunrise. So I just put a little bit of the adhesive on and now I'm just going to put it on the top of that piece to mat it. Just like that. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to that piece that I made, that plaid piece, and as you can see it sat so it's kind of, the colors come out a little bit better. And I want to go ahead and I want to mat that on a piece of dark chocolate cardstock, um, four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm just, real quick, I'm just going to put some tape on the back of my uh, Madras plaid piece. And then I'm going to take a piece of this uh, ripe avocado saddle stitched ribbon, which I also got from Paper Tray, and I'm putting some adhesive on it. And I want to just put that right, you know, in the middle, just like that. And then I'm going to add my stamped image into the middle, like that. And then what you would want to do, um, for time's sake, of course, I don't have time to do it, but you want to add two buttons, a button on either side with some twine. And then to finish that off, to finish it off, I'm going to just do just a little bit of faux stitching just to show you guys how I do it. So basically you're just making little, little tiny lines. Let me go in a little bit and I'm just making little dashes just like that just to make it seem like I've actually stitched it. Um, you could also go in with a paper piercer and make little holes and then connect the dots as well but I find this to be a bit easier. So that's it. Let's go back to the finished car. Let me back it up. There we go. So that's it. Um, that is the finished card, and that is Hags. And today I've showed you how I made it. So, anyways, I hope you've enjoyed today's technique. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. And um, also, if you guys have any suggestions for techniques that you would like to see done, please let me know. Um, if I know how to do it, then I'm more than happy to um, show you how it's done. And if not, I can. All, and if I don't know how to do it, I can always play around with it and hopefully learn something new. So I hope you enjoyed today's technique and I hope you will come back again next month and join me for another technique then.